earlier in my life, I did not realize that the most destructive force in the universe, which was what I was doing, is also the most creative force. And it all had to do with how I responded to that force. That force is conflict. And so how we respond to conflict will determine whether we have freedom and innovation or whether we stay stuck where we are. In this video, I am going to share with you what conflict is at its most basic core and what those choices are where we can either stay stuck or find freedom. I'm Karen Valencic and I have been studying, teaching, and writing about conflict for three decades. So first, what is conflict? I am going to give you a definition that is at the core, it's the most basic and easy to grasp. And it comes from the Latin roots of conflict, which con means together and flict means to strike. So literally, conflict is to strike together. As we understand this, right here is the secret to whether we innovate or we stay stuck. And you know, you can experience conflict either internally through self-doubt, fear or overwhelm. You can experience it with another person or group of people where you have differing priorities, personalities, and perspectives. Or you can have conflict with an event that happens. Think of broken phones and computers, flat tires, pandemics. The way we react to all of those different conflicts at its core is the same. And so understanding this and do this right now. Take your fist and push them together and just feel that. That's tension and that is conflict. What we do from here is whether we create with it or whether we stay victim to it. I'm going to share with you what I've determined are the five different ways that we can respond to this. And as I do that, I'd like you to first bring to mind a conflict that you've had or you have right now. Then I'd like you to answer the question to yourself, what is it that I want that I do not have because of this conflict that is not dependent on another person? An example would be if I have a staff member or a coworker that is habitually late. For our purposes of conflict mastery, I want you to think about without that person involved. So for example, with that person being late, you might want to think that you want them to be on time, which you do, but a more powerful position to take is what I want is I want us to start on time. I want our customers, our patients, our clients to be greeted on time when they arrive. That is what I want that is not dependent on that specific person. And that's a really important question to ask yourself. Here are the five ways that I have determined through many decades of studying this with people. I'm gonna provide you with a flow chart a little later in this video that outlines all of this. I like to think about things physically, and if you were with me, we'd do this physically. But first of all, think about you are going to put your, your thing that you want that you don't have over here. Here you are. And there's something between you and that thing you want. And so it's how do I engage with this thing is whether I end up getting there or not. One option is you can stand still or retreat. You can do nothing. That might be if I'm fearful, if I have a lot of self-doubt, if I'm feeling overwhelmed or frozen in some way, I, and I don't know what to do, I might just stay right here. Does it get me where I wanna go? No, it does not. Do we do it? Of course we do it. Sometimes there's some wisdom in standing still. It depends on whether you're avoiding something or whether you're, you're looking for the right timing. And only you can answer that question. So that's number one. Number two is I could push that thing out of the way. And that looks like maybe becoming really dominant, maybe yelling, forcing a situation in some way to push it out of the way. Often what happens when we do that, we make the situation worse. Think of the last time somebody tried to push you into doing something you didn't want to do, or when somebody started yelling at you, or you tend to create more resistance when you do that. It's a little self-defeating. So you might get to where you want to go 
in the short run, but you created a bigger problem in the, in the long run. Not very effective, but do we do it? Yes, we do do it. Okay, so number three is what I call sneak around. And sneak around is I don't really deal with the person directly. I may go down the hall and, you know, I kind of think about it as, as literally sneaking around that other person. And it may be I go and talk about this with somebody else. I might triangulate the problem. I might borrow money um, as a way of avoiding dealing with, with money issues. I might do a lot of different things in terms of just not dealing directly with the issue. And that's what I call sneaking around. And it's very, very detrimental in organizations when people are not direct. And perhaps maybe somebody asks you a question and you, you're not really honest with them. You're sneaking around it. It is not very effective. It's one I really have a hard time ever justifying. <laughs> do we do it? Yes, it happens every day in organizations. Is it effective? Not at all. So those are the three ways that we tend to do things that really keep us stuck in the conflict. The last two are more productive. So the fourth one is what I call deal with to go around. And deal with to go around is we actually have some conversation, we address this issue. Now we may decide to agree to disagree, we may decide to compromise, and often people say, well, people got to learn to compromise, and compromise is fine, you just got to realize that both parties give something up. And so if that's all right, then that's okay with you, but a lot of times if you make a compromise on something that's long-term and really important to you, it will backfire. So we may find all kinds of different ways of talking about this and maybe be a little disgruntled, but we, we make some agreements and we, we move forward. And that's, that's a good thing. It's not a fabulous thing, it's not mastery, but it's a really good thing. And so do we do it? You know, we sometimes do it. The fifth option, can you think of what it might be? The fifth option is where we have conflict mastery, and it's what I call spiral impact. And so what I do, rather than push, rather than sneak around, and rather than do nothing, I actually will embrace the, the conflict as a way for me to grow, a way for me to explore what other options are. And this is where I can do some personal development and I can come to some really fantastic conversation with the others so that we can create something that's beyond either one of us. And it's not pie in the sky, it's absolutely possible and I do it all the time and I call it spiral impact, the power to get it done with grace. And that is the core of my work. And so here I'm showing you a flowchart of these five options. You know, a lot of people say sometimes, well, maybe you need to change the change the um, outcome that you want and then that puts you on a different flow chart when you think about the conflict that you identified earlier can you see where you are on that flow chart and just know those are all choices that we make and i don't mean to make any of them wrong it's just whether you get what you want or you don't and can you do it with some ease and grace or not and that's what my point is I am going to include a copy of this flowchart down in my notes below this video. I would love to hear your comments, your questions down below as well. If you're sitting there thinking, well, this is really cool, but how do I actually do that? That's something that I delve into in my book, Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. I also have some other resources below this video. And please feel free to check out this next video that will go into some more details around this topic. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.